Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. Welcome back to another video, and in this video we're going to talk about if Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a good game now that it's not pay to win anymore, basically. You know, in case you don't know that game, so many freaking loot boxes that you had to buy and open, you know, it took 40 hours to unlock Darth Vader or Luke, then you gotta unlock the other one another 80 hours, and that's assuming you're not buying stuff to upgrade everything else in the entire game. So anyway, let's talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, first of all, I think that with the way that the game is built, okay, they still have the star card system. If you don't know, you have a character, you get to pick three star cards for them, and they do things like something like uh, you earn more points, you can regenerate your health faster, or they mess with your equipment so like your grenade recharges faster, or it's a better grenade, or it's a, this type of grenade, or anything like that, right? Three star cards per character, you can unlock them with skill points, and you level up. The more you level up, the more star cards that you have the ability to unlock, but you can also upgrade the star cards. Now, I really don't like this system, because it's, it's something where there seems to be a lack of content in the game at the moment, and the star card is the best compromise. I think that later on, when the game kind of becomes when there's if they if they add more blaster types or they add more types of star cards or more types of classes i think that the star card system will actually go away but at the moment it, it's a good and bad system right so this game is mostly skill but definitely can be equipment based when i was you know first playing the game i i could kick butt i could kick butt now, though, I can't, right now, I don't know if it's, I think it's partially skill, but partially star card, is I can't go on massive, like, slay the entire game. And usually, those who slay the entire game have the level 4 star cards. But to get the level 4 star cards, you have to play that class a lot anyways. So it's kind of like a, a give and take, you know, you get heavier into specialization as you go through. So it's a give and take. And it definitely, though, here's what it does that I think a lot of games do not have the guts to do. Is This is, I think, if you take all the bad and good of the star cards, I think this makes star cards worth it. Is it gives the players who play the game more an advantage. This game has the guts to say, hey, these people have played the game more. They're more badass than you. What are you going to do about it? And then you have, to, you have to grind out and learn the game and become more of a beast. And I really like that. Honestly, I do. I really do. I think that's why a couple of the different Call of Duty games I liked. Although Call of Duty, if it's balanced well, just depending on what kind of gun, you got to learn the play style. But, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a lack of blasters in this game. Let me explain why. Every class has four blasters available to it, okay? Except the first blaster, depending on, there's six teams in total, two teams for each era, there's three eras. So if you're a First Order clone, you get a different blaster than a prequel from the Clone Wars clone, and you didn't get a different blaster than the droid. But that's only one selection slot. The other three stay there forever. The other thing is all the blasters do the same thing in that first slot, the period specific one, except for the resistance, the one that when that takes place with Ray. So it honestly feels like you just have four blasters available to you. And it it wears down. And I know like Boba Fett has his own gun. Uh, Han Solo's got his own gun. Captain Phasma's got her own gun. Finn's got two guns, right? And you can provide those guns to the players too. Battlefront 1, after its DLC, had a lot of different guns. Or I, I, I'm saying guns. I know they're blasters. I say guns because it's easier, okay? But it's really easy. with the Since they're laser blasters, actually, technically, I guess you'd call them plasma rifles because if it was a laser, it'd act differently. So with plasma rifles. It's really easy, though, to switch between the classes and change up what you're doing. So it honestly, if you want to do the hardcore class specialization, don't, it's not going to be fun if you're in there for blasters. But if you're into 
Kind of like playing Rainbow Six Siege, every round you gotta change your character. In this one, every life, you know, you change up your strategy a little bit. It gets really fun and really interesting, and I mean, I have a lot of fun doing that. And even though I like to play as one class, I, I still like to change up every once in a while. So, in that case, it's really, really good. Now, with the heroes, there's eight heroes on each side. Honestly, here's what I say, okay? Here's what I'm going to say. Get rid of Finn, and get rid of Ideen, and get rid of Bosk, and maybe even get rid of Yoda or Leia. If you're going to have eight heroes on each side, we are missing General Grievous, who was really cool. Mace, or not, yeah, we're missing Mace Windu. Really cool. We are missing Obi-Wan Kenobi. Anakin Skywalker, if you decided to put him in the game, even though Darth Vader's in the game, I think that'd be pretty cool. Qui-Gon Jinn. And we're missing Count Dooku. Okay? And any other characters, we could, we could put in Jar Jar Binks. Right? This is what I say. Put in Jar Jar Binks and make every single ability a taunt that annoys players. Do it. It, it would be amazing. So, there's a lack of heroes in this game. The first... Like, the first generation... I mean, Lando's in here, which is I, a weird choice, but really cool. The the first, you know, four, five, and six Star Wars characters are in here. And even spaceships from um, 7, 8, and 9, and 4, 5, and 6 are in here. But the prequels, like... Here's what I say. The prequel movies were missed potential. You can see that they're missed potential. The movies are bad. The lore is really really cool so i think if they're gonna add content there's a bunch of characters even from the expanded universe the cartoon right the main anakin's padawan i keep forgetting her name she's cool all right you can add more characters in the other two that died when palpatine you know did that why not put in chancellor palpatine that'd be kind of cool if you could play as emperor palpatine or chancellor palpatine so overall there is a lack of heroes. Um, it's a good, it's all okay selection. So, is this game good now? At a discount, it is. At a discount. My price point for this game, I would be okay with it with twenty-five to forty dollars. Ragnar gave it to me for free, but they are coming out with a bunch of free DLC for this game. They said all the DLC is going to be free because EA. No, they messed up. I think what I think is going to happen is this is another Battlefield 4 situation where the first year of the of the game is absolutely going to be crap, and then it's going to be the King of the Ring for like 10 years. Battlefield 4 is still an amazing game, and still runs amazing, and I think it's almost been out for 10 years. So overall, if you can get this game at a discount, 30 bucks, 30 bucks, and it'll be worth your money. And it's a, it's getting there. It's becoming a good game. I like it. It's not my main game, but it's a good secondary game. Right, if you're playing, like me, PUBG, and you, you don't want to play PUBG, instead of sitting there raging, you can just go, oh, I want to play Battlefront 2. Kind of like, oh, I want to play Siege. So, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new for more casual gaming and other types of gaming videos, because I don't care what I make. And I will see you in the next episode of Stream Vlog or Steam It Post of whatever I decided to make.